Good evening. In Hebrews 5.11, the writer says that he is busy explaining things to us that are difficult to explain unless we pay close attention to what is being said. And then he continues in, the, in chapter 6 of Hebrews to call us to lives of mature faith where we apply the core doctrines of the gospel to our daily walk with God. Now, if you try this, you know that it can be crushing due to our failures, due to our inabilities to walk righteously before the Lord in everything that we do. And therefore, we should notice that the, the writer of the Hebrews gives us this call to faithfulness, to mature faith, and then says that we should do it in following, realizing that we are following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ that entered into the presence of God on our behalf, made atonement for us through His sacrifice. And in doing this, he ends chapter, five say, chapter 6 saying that Jesus has become a high priest forever in the order of of Melchizedek. Now Melchizedek is a somewhat mysterious character from the Old Testament and in Hebrews 7 he is used as a witness to the fact that Jesus as high priest is far superior to all of the Le Levite priests that we found in the Old Testament. The writer quotes from Psalm 110 verse 4 where God says of his eternal son you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And then he uses the history of Genesis 14, where Melchizedek met Abraham after his victory over the kings of Sodom uh, and blessed Abraham, in which Abraham to which Abraham reacted by giving Melchizedek a sacrifice, a tenth of all of the treasure that he captured in this battle. In retelling these events, from Genesis 14, the writer of Hebrews says the following about Melchizedek. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and prince, priest of, the God, of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, his name means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, like the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. Now, the main aim of giving us all of this information about Melchizedek is to show us that Jesus, in being a high priest from the order of Melchizedek, is far superior to the Levite priests of the Old Testament. Jesus did not become priest simply because he was born out of the Levite tribe. He didn't become priest because the law said that he should be a priest. Now Jesus is the eternal high priest that was appointed by the, the divine declaration of God. God said, you are eternal priest in this order of Melchizedek. The writer of the Hebrews refers to this declaration of God when he says in verse 22 and further, because of this oath, this declaration that he is the priest forever, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. So all of the failures of the previous covenant, the old covenant, the sacrifices and the work of the, of the high priest in the Old Testament is replaced by Jesus, is fulfilled by Jesus as the better high priest, bringing us the new covenant. Verse 23 of chapter 7 says, Now there have been many of those priests since they've, since they've prevented them from continuing in office. So no one of the Old Testament priests could be an eternal priest because all of them died. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. He can be the one that is permanently busy interceding for us because he is permanently living in the presence of God. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. 
He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when He offered Himself. For the law appoints a high priest as high priest men who are weak, but the oath, the declaration of God, which came after the law, appointed the Son who has been made, who has been made perfect forever. So in striving to live lives of mature faith, in striving to apply the core teachings of the gospel to our daily lives and, and to continue with perseverance, to, in, in, to continue persevering, we have this great comf- comfort and this great confidence that every step that we take in relationship with God, every step that we take in applying the gospel truths to our lives is a step taken in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Because we have Christ as our High Priest. We have Christ as the one that made atonement for us. And therefore, all of our lives are lived in the presence of God, always striving deeper into relationship with Him. Good evening.